Hello everybody, my name is uh, Peter Dambach, Heidelberg University, and I'm going to uh, give you a brief uh, overview over malaria and climate change, with a particular focus in uh, Africa. So today's media are uh, strongly reporting on the uh, adverse health effects that are emerging with an already observed and additionally expected warming climate. Equally, the global malaria burden is commonly reported to be aggravated by climate change. Or is it? Well, if you dig a bit deeper into current research, it becomes obvious that the situation is more diverse than to be answered with just a simple yes or no. Climate change is expected to significantly increase average temperatures and alter the amount and pattern of precipitations worldwide. Malaria is caused by prosthetic uh, protozoon of the uh, genus Plasmodium and transmitted by certain uh, mosquito species of the genus Anopheles. So both the pathogen itself and the mosquito's reproductive cycles are highly temperature sensitive. The uh, temperature optimum for transmission is around some 30 degrees Celsius and climate alterations towards or away from this optimum can significantly influence the epidemiological situation. This simple fact is uh, very often the context of justification for most of the current future malaria uh, distribution models. Mosquito-borne diseases affect hundreds of millions of people each year and a uh, protrusion of vector mosquitoes into new areas is seen as a possible danger of geographical spread of malaria. Well, so much about the theory, but what factors drive that malaria transmission in a real-world scenario? First and foremost, there have to be malaria parasites within a given human population. Without those infected people, no transmission, even if competent vector mosquitoes are abundant, is possible. Secondly, a country's health system performance is crucial. If an occurring case of malaria is immediately treated, well, it cannot serve as a potential source of infection anymore. So if due to a uh, more appropriate climate, malaria is introduced into areas with an unprepared health system, well then, that region may experience severe episodes of malaria or even a permanent installation of malaria. The prevalence of competent vector mosquitoes, the reproduction rates of the vector and the parasite, and vector survival are the key parameters which may be significantly altered by climate change. Health system preparedness and human actions, on the other hand, are variables that can prevent the spread of malaria, even if conditions become more favorable. This means the areas that are most at risk to experience increased malaria transmission or even a newly introduction of malaria, those are likely to be in resource-poor settings at the fringe of current transmission. So, bearing in mind the uh, epidemiological and the anthropogenic components of transmission at the other side, it becomes apparent that solely climate-based malaria models have only a very limited force of expression. Areas of uh, worldwide malaria transmission lie in well, Sub-Saharan Africa, the northeastern half of South America and South and Southeast Asia. But um, 
by the, the sheer number and severity of cases, Africa is by uh, far the most uh, uh, disease burden loaded continent. And um, under changing climate, malaria transmission may be altered in, in several ways. So um, first of all, like warmer temperatures can promote the pressing forward of vector prevalence into highland regions, for example, which have previously been malaria-free. Few degrees Celsius increase could remarkably extend areas where transmission becomes possible. Although the uh, impact of rising temperatures is controversially discussed, an increasing human development and, and land alteration may be a uh, superimposed and confounding factor. The menace of malaria introduction to large susceptible populations is still a major concern. Second, malaria at the geographic fringes of transmission, such as the Sahel, is mainly driven by precipitation. Depending on which climate scenario is utilized, the future situation might show either increased or lowered appropriateness for malaria transmission. In a drier scenario, stable malaria is likely to retreat from the current fringes of transmission and to become epidemic. Under a wetter scenario, however, stable malaria would fully establish even in formerly malaria-free or uh, formerly epidemic areas. In the case of parts of East and West Africa, most malaria models predict a shortened period of transmission due to a shorter and drier rainy season. In such settings, climate change would be expected to grant actually relief to disease burden. A changing climate is um, likely to alter um, vector development and vector survival. And um, depending on the geographic region where you actually are, as this might have either a hampering or promoting uh, effect on malaria transmission. Today's malaria models rely uh, primarily on either precipitation or temperature data, and therefore they're having considerable weaknesses in actual future prediction uh, capacity. F furthermore, depending on geographic region, the expected climatic impact on malaria transmission is different depending on which um, prediction model has been uh, used. Human activities and behavior have been and are likely to uh, play a more important role than just climate change alone uh, in future.